Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. Well, photography is many things, one of which is art. I think there is a lot of pictures that are taken by professions or even regular people like us, especially of, of nature that looks a lot like paintings. And, uh, you know, can we can see like photography shows in museums and things like that as well. But photography is also memories because if you take a picture of somebody that you love or any kind of thing that you any moment that had special meaning for you you'll be able to remember that forever even though you know it's always in your heart it's always in your mind but seeing that thing again it's just like can bring a lot of emotions so photography can do this to people podcasting remotely can be a real pain it's quite challenging but it doesn't have to be. Zencaster has this all-in-one web-based platform and makes the process really quick and easy. That's the way it should be, right? Just focus on the podcast. So let's talk about the quality and the challenge of recording online. So Zencaster gives crystal clear sound and really nice HD video. I know I don't use it, but it's there. Now, that's not even to mention how easy it is to use. Like even for my guests that aren't even that tech savvy. There's nothing to download. They just click on the link and start recording. Zencaster is all about making your podcasting experience easy and everything from local recording to automatic post-production in the tool. You don't have to leave your browser to get the episode done. Maybe you want to make podcasts as well. I mean, I think it's a great idea personally. Obviously, I'm running one. I think you should make one too. It's easy. Just do it. I actually use Zencaster. If it sounds great, that's because the platform works. And if it sounds like crap, that's because I've done something wrong. But Zencaster really does give me amazing quality for my guests. If you go to Zencaster.com slash pricing, blah, 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 and enter this promo code, look, it's already long and confusing, and I'll just make it easier by putting the link and the promo code in the episode description. If you do that, you get 30% off your first three months. So that's actually pretty sweet. So look in the description for the link and the promo code, and then you get 30% off to, to start doing your own podcast. Do it. Go for it. Zencaster. Great. Great. <laughs> Perfect. That's it. Each person says something a little different. Uh, each person interprets it a little different. And it's, it is, I think, kind of fascinating, at least for me to start the conversation. Yeah. I mean, everybody does a lot of things differently, even if it's the same thing. And there is a quote that I, I always forget who said it, but it's something like nobody reads the same book because, of course, I'm in the book business. And, you know, <laughs> I can see like how people read the book and then they come back with some questions that I never thought of because that's what they were thinking about the character or whatever. And, you know, some people like it a lot. Some people hate it. So nobody reads the same book. I love it. I love it. Now, listening to your accent, uh, mm -hmm. is it is it uh, Bon Dia or what, are, what is it afternoon or day? Well, I'm actually in the United States right now. I'm in Houston. Oh, nice. So it is uh, 6, 19 p.m. Ah. 18, 19 for other countries that use the military one. Uh, but I am originally Brazilian, so that's why you can detect the accent. Even though I've been in the U.S. forever, but it is something that doesn't go away because I wasn't born here. <laughs> we all, we all have an accent, right? I just I love it. it. I just and and to be and to be honest, Brazilian Portuguese is the sexiest language I've ever heard. It is so <laughs> beautiful. If it's so from sexy. Rio, it's amazing. <laughs> it's from Rio. That shows that shows your that shows your prejudice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, to the bang, to the bang. Okay, so let's move on to your first photo. I, I I am really excited. I'm here to celebrate you and to to really share with the world what made you you and hopefully <laughs> inspire other people. So ready to go to the next the first photo? I don't even know where I sent you. I forgot. <laughs> oh, 
well, how it works is I describe what I see. Okay. okay. So first of all, it's a promotional image. I think it's called Trilogy Ad for Instagram. Okay. And it's you know it's nicely composed. So at the it's the background is of like the ocean on a very very calm day. So it's just water, very dark. Mm-hmm. Right. And the at the top it says Andrea Bailey, and yeah. there are three book covers. Mm-hmm. And it's this Olympian love trilogy now available by now Barnes and Noble Amazon. Uh huh. It's a promotional ad image, and it's got the so the three covers are Olympian passion, Olympian heartbreak, and Olympian love. And yeah, we don't know each other, and I no. I want to learn about you. I come from the world of writing and and books as well. And so uh-huh. you are a romance author, award-winning romance author. So please explain what it, what is this promotional image of your trilogy, and mm-hmm. and who 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 are you? <laughs> well, I am Andrea Billy. That's actually my pen name, right? Okay. So I started writing romance. I actually start out writing other things since I was a young girl. And I was still living in Brazil. I always wanted to be a writer. So I would set up to, you know, get a notebook and start writing, writing, writing lots of stories, not necessarily romance, but but anything. I mean, like adventures, mysteries, you know, infused with romance sometimes, sci-fi, anything. I just loved it. Uh, and you know how uh, life gets in the way of your dreams sometimes and then you just go do something else and you still have that background that you always wanted to do something and you never had the chance. So I would always be like writing a poem or, you know, a short story or something, but never knew how to start on the business of like actually writing and being published. Mm -hmm. And then uh, a couple of years ago, even though like I would write things and put in the drawers and, you know, sometimes by hand or then just file on the computer away and things. And uh, a couple of years ago, uh, there was, I saw a, a, an ad, an opportunity to submit a manuscript to a publishing company. Wow. And okay. I had this manuscript to Reggie. But I didn't know like any process, you know, like I wrote the thing and I kind of edited a couple of times, but it was not like, you know, professionally edited or anything. It was just, I was just very, very naive. I had no idea how to go through the process, but I saw this thing and I'm like, okay, I'm going to send this and see how it works. Well, I sent it and, you know, I never heard from them again, but, but I had like something there already, you know, like I had like a full manuscript. So I started going to research about it you know now that i have it ready how can i go about publishing and then i found a bunch of resources and i found a lot of people here in houston that were involved with some uh, writing groups and then it started but i didn't start writing romance i started writing something else i published another book that's more like a psychological thriller and i i published a book of poems and then like i made a lot of like friends in the writing community and the romance one actually came out out of a, a, a challenge. Some of my friends says, hey, you know, why don't you write some specific genre like, you know, romance? And I go, I don't know. I've, I've read a lot of romance before in my life, but it wasn't I wasn't thinking. OK, yeah. So then you started going into into romance. Yes, because of a challenge. And then actually, you know, like I had written a scene one time for another contest and I found it. And I found that scene and I go, I can work on this. And it's actually one of the scenes in the first book. And I sent that to some of my writing friends and I told them like, well, what do you think about this? Do you think I can work on a romance based on this specific scene? And they loved it. And they said, yeah, you can totally write a trilogy or something based on this. So that's how it started, you know? And then like I went in with my pen name as Andrea Bailey because when you write lots of different genres, it's not good to to mix the name because if somebody is not, you know, into romance and then suddenly they pick up your book and it's a romance, they may be very upset. <laughs> so you okay. have to pick okay. for your different readers, you know. Okay, now that that is fascinating to me. 
because I understand this idea of, of being the author, of writing, of putting your things. So you have, do you have different names for different book styles? Yes, I have two names. I have uh, one name for everything else that I write, which is poetry, short stories, um, flash fiction, uh, my other novel that's a psychological thriller. And then I have Andrea Bailey for my romance which uh, I am amazing. currently concentrating more on because uh, the third book in the trilogy came out last year. So the trilogy is finally complete. And just last week, the third book in Spanish was also published. So oh, wow. it is now complete in Spanish as well. And wow. also two weeks ago, the second book in Greek just came out that the third is still being translated, but it's going to come out also in Greek. So I have oh, wow. three different languages, you know, that, that the books are being translated to. So that's pretty cool. First of all, it's very cool. It's amazing. Uh, congratulations. Thank but you. not not Portuguese. <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> uh, why not? Uh, why not? Harder. I want to do, but it's harder to find a um, translator for Portuguese. Ah. Um, why? Because I know the language. So, you know, at one point I was trying to say, like, maybe I will write it. And then I went into some research and it was totally like not recommended for you to write your same book in another language, even if you know it very well because first okay. is a waste of time because you are you basically wasting time writing the same book while you could be right. writing another book <laughs> and second yep. because you know the language the tendency is you probably would change a lot of things because you are basically yeah. rewriting the, the book in another language so i gave That's up true. you know trying to do that and i'm uh, trying to find translators in portuguese and uh, it, it just I, I, the other day I had like an offer, you know, and it was interesting because this guy's like, oh, I have translated so many books. And, you know, his um, profile was actually very good. He had like a lot of translations and people had given him uh, good reviews and everything. So he um, in the platform that I have for translation has a paragraph, you know, a couple of paragraphs. And then the translator, if they want it, they will translate and send it to me. So I have to accept or not. So, of course, yeah. because I, I, I know the language, I can totally uh, approve it. Or not. So he sent this to me and I'm reading and I'm like, no, that doesn't make sense. I'm, uh, it seems to me that he totally Google translated it. So I picked up right. that same thing and Google translated and it is exactly what he put. So I said, of course, That's he's doing nuts. like 20, 30 books a year because he's putting everything. And the thing is, for people that know the Latin languages, it's very easy yeah. to detect if something has been. I mean, he could oh, for sure. do, he could do something. He could be more perfect, even if you put on Google Translator. But if he had proofread it, he would see the mistakes yeah. that there were. Yeah. You know, because we have the feminine, we have the masculine. And then when you're saying like, yeah. I am happy or I am whatever you're gonna because I am a, a woman you know that will agree with my genre so it would be an yeah. have an a at the end if it's a male mm -hmm. it usually will have a no at the end right so when right. you read it <laughs> when you read the translation from Google Translator Google Translator doesn't know what what you are if you're a man and a woman or yeah. whatever so they will just put everything as oh as masculine Okay, so for example, how would you say in, in, in uh, the Rio uh, de Janeiro Portuguese, I am not impressed if you're a man, if you're a man? Oh, you mean like, the, I'm not impressed? Yeah. If a man is saying that, it's like, não estou impressionado. Okay, and how would you say it if you're, fem if you're female? Não estou impressionada. No, estou impressionada. That's, that's what we have to send to that guy and say, yo, buddy get out of here that's that's awful I, that's awful i sent him something i said look you know <laughs> and he had no idea that i'm brazilian right because like the platform has andrea bailey and everything in english so ah. he had no idea but the problem is that i've had some other authors 
go into this platform before and because they know that I speak Portuguese that I'm Brazilian they would send to me their little uh, excerpts that the people did and a lot right. of times I say like no it, 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 it doesn't you know it's not very good or sometimes it was okay you know and actually I had two people translate my books but when I started reading them it's like no it doesn't make sense because they are doing too much like translation word for word and not using right. expressions yeah. that we would I, even though I tell them, I said, look, you know, just uh, think, read it aloud, the dialogues, for example. Nobody will say like this. I mean, we'll say this in English. Okay, fine. But you won't do the same way in Portuguese because it doesn't, this expression doesn't exist. Or it, no, exactly, exactly. So that was the hardest. It's so far being the hardest to find Portuguese. I was very lucky with Got Spanish mm -hmm. because I saw, I, 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 I had a couple of uh, experiences too that didn't work out. And um, mm -hmm. this girl came, she did translations of a book of somebody that I know. And uh, she, I think that she saw his uh, list of uh, author friends and saw that I was on this platform. And she came to me and she's actually from Argentina and is in Argentina. Uh, okay. And she said, hey, I would, I would love to translate your trilogy because I love romance and it seems very interesting. You have Greek mythology, a lot of things that I like in this. And I said, okay, so, you know, she said, and I, my Spanish is okay to get by, but I'm mm, not like mm -hmm. literary Spanish, like, you know, I'm, it's not my native language and I'm, but I can read it and make some sense of it, but it sound, it seemed okay, but I have a lot of friends here also from uh, other countries, a friend from Peru, a friend from Paraguay, and I sent it to them and I said, hey, would you mind taking a look at this and just see if sure. it makes sense because they had already read the English version. So that was even better because they knew exactly what the story was about. Uh, right. And they liked and they said, she's very, very good. So I asked her to do the three translations and she did all of the three books. So that was good. She actually did my psychological thriller too. So she translated four of my books to Spanish. Oh, wow. Wow. Look at you. So, so uh, w w let's move on to the next photo. But before we do, <laughs> have you counted how many books you've, uh, you've published so far? For the, for the romance, I have three books, the, this trilogy. It's like one, two, three, yeah. the trilogy is complete. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to work on the next book, but, you know, like all these things about the translations kind of took my time as well. Yeah. And with my other uh, profile, I have the psychological thriller, a book of poems, and I have several short stories published in different anthologies. So technically, nice. I have five books. Yeah. Okay. These are good problems to have if you can't remember <laughs> how many. This is awesome. Yeah, it's because of the uh, short stories. Because I always uh, like how many yeah. short stories. I don't know. Like a couple of uh, interesting anthologies with different genres too. So, okay. Well, let's move on to the next photo. All right. Most of them are probably talking about the books because that was my you know, my interest in, in, in promoting them since the trilogy yeah. is complete. And now this finished one is complete as well. Yeah. Okay. So this one is called OL Promo with Sierra Quote. And the quote is, okay, so it's, an, it's another sort of, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a graphically designed image. The background, again, is uh, sky with the water. It's sort of a nice, not too shocking, uh, not too dramatic uh, sun sunset, but, you know, pretty. Uh, and at the top of the image is the quote, a feel-good read that won't disappoint. Sierra Cartwright, USA Today best-selling author. Uh, mm -hmm. And the cover, it looks like an ebook because it's like a cover on, uh, on an iPad or whatever. And it says yeah. Olympian Love, Olympian Love Trilogy Book 3, uh, mm -hmm. Andrea Bailey. Yeah, that's the uh, one of the ads for the for the third book when it came out. Okay, and in the in the ad, it's in in this sorry, in the cover is this woman holding onto a man, and the, the the font is all very soft and very nice. In the background, there's like a, a kind of it looks like a, an ancient uh, battery at the ocean with a few of the boats and everything. Uh, it looks very Mediterranean. It's actually Crete. Crete. Okay. So as, a, as, a, as an author I, and somebody who writes and produces books, I know the process of putting books together. But mm -hmm. what is it about romance? And in this case, you really anchored it in, in Greek 
uh, mythology and, and so share what's what's the the fascination what's the passion what's the the fuel the the energy and the drive that makes you put these together especially in in the sort of in this in the realm of romance well see i since i was very young i just was crazy about greece i start you know when i when i heard the stories about the mythology the gods the goddesses all that it was something that fascinate me a lot i just was in love with greece and history mythology everything and you know when there's a place in the world that you think it's like totally unreachable because in your mind it's like a dream place and you think that mm -hmm. you're never going to be able to go there because it's so far away and it's so expensive and so idyllic and paradisical that you just you know, it's kind of like a dream, not something that that is attainable. Not to mention that there's going to be a pandemic for a few years. <laughs> well, yeah, but, you know, but this is like since you were a child, you know, thinking about those things. Sure. And when I was in college uh, many years ago in Brazil, I, I always loved languages too, you know, and history and all this stuff So and, and languages. So I found a teacher to teach me uh, modern Greek. So oh, wow. I started learning that. It was just for a couple of months because uh, I don't know what happens being a long time ago, but he had to go back to Greece. But I had that little bit of, uh, <laughs> of, of knowledge of that. You know, I knew the alphabet. I knew a couple of words, how to say, how are you? Good morning. It was very, very little. And, and it stuck in my mind forever, even though I never studied the thing again. Yeah, okay. When I started writing, when I started thinking about writing the romance, I, I I like exotic places. I like the, the different cultures, and of course, like Greece being you know my top one mm -hmm. destination, kind of because of the history, mythology. It was like, a okay, piece of cake. This has to do something right. with Greece because this way, it, 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 I'm, I have to write about something that I like. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm going to write a romance that's gonna be like in Greece or have a Greek character, and I'm gonna have to be thinking and researching about Greece, that's going to keep me interested as well. And then I'll be doing something that I enjoy. For sure. That's how the idea came. And then the male character in the romance is a Greek man. And then the female character is an American woman. So that's okay. how it started. Uh, okay, so let's, let's dive into the psychology of on the one hand, writing a narrative is about always very sensitive to the reader, thinking, mm -hmm. okay, well, I, I have a reader, and you kind of have a picture in your mind of who that reader might be, or not, it's not necessarily defined, but as part of the, of the process of communicating is that you're trying to evoke either a change in thinking or a change in, in perception, and in romance in particular, it's a change in feel, right? So... What is the, the mindset that you come to when you sit? Is it you're just going with intu intuition or are you going with a particular motive? Um, you know, going into romance, the, 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 the section of the bookstore is quite classical in the sense that the books all kind of follow a certain form. So mm -hmm. what happens in your, in your mind as you're writing? You know, I pretty much did free form in my own style because a quote another quote that i'm going to tell you but this time i know who said it was Anne rice one of my favorite writers she said write the book that you want to read right and yep okay i want to write a romance with that i want to read right so i i uh -huh. didn't it, because from everything that i tried to learn about writing you know a lot of authors say don't think about who you're writing to. You have to write something that you like because that's what's going to show. If you're writing something right. for somebody else that you don't like, you know, it, you're not going to have the passion on it. It's, it's not going to show because you're not, you know, you're not so interested in it. Like mm -hmm. I don't, I could not be a ghost writer because I mm -hmm. have to feel the emotions like myself. I need to know what I'm writing about, right? I cannot just get somebody else's story and just like write for them because 
it wouldn't feel the same for me. It wouldn't have the same passion. Like a lot of times, friends of mine's like, oh, I'm going to tell you the story of my life or my love because you're going to have to write this. And that's like, no, it doesn't work like this. You know, I just mm -hmm. can't. I just can't write your story. You know, it has to be my story. And in terms of my writing style, I'm a total pantser. I will not plan, you know, I will start something and then I will have an idea. And from that idea, I'll keep going. Like this, this yeah. trilogy, I changed it a lot of times. And a lot of times I came up with ideas that once, once I went to do research, gave me another idea and I kept building on top of it. Yep. So that is the way that I do it. And, I, and this trilogy written in uh, first person on the female viewpoint. And, and I see that uh, I have a lot of uh, readers that's like, oh, we would like to see like his uh, point of view too and all that. But <laughs> maybe, maybe one day I will write a book just on his point of view. But right now I think that it worked for what I, what I envisioned. It's also fascinating to me that you're originally from Brazil. You got to, how old are you when you arrived in the US? Uh, in my 20s. Okay. And uh, did you study in the US? Um, because to write in a second language is to, is to mediate your thinking through a, a very different, like, I don't know about you, but I'm a different person in the different languages that I speak. In English, I'm, I'm like one person. But when I speak French, I'm somebody else. And when I speak Hebrew, I'm a, I have a different thought pattern. So uh -huh. what, do, what about you? Yeah, it's the same way. But I started learning English when I was a child. Of course, like when I moved here, it was a completely different thing because when I studied English in Brazil, it was in the British Institute. So I had a little more of mm -hmm. a, a different vocabulary for some things and yep. a different accent. But um, I ended up at first like in North Carolina, which was a wake up call because I'm like, I have no idea what language these people are talking. I don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> But then after that, you just adapt yourself, and then I end up here in Houston. But I did go to school here. At, I took um, some writing classes and technical writing at uh, and creative writing at Texas Tech. So okay, okay, that also helped. And then, of course, I've been here for a while, and uh, you know, I have a regular job, and I only deal with in English, and I write a lot. And it's something that I always like to do is writing, and because I already was familiar with the language before i always read a lot you know and i sure. was always writing a lot i mean i did write a couple of things in portuguese when i was in brazil and then when i came here the first time you know every once in a while but and i still read a lot of books in portuguese too so that i can keep up with uh, you know sure. the changes in, uh, in grammar literature and everything that goes on with uh, you know every every language is a moving language there's always something new happening yeah. especially when you're not living in the country anymore you know, you go back, it's like, okay, this is new slang. I never heard of this before. Yeah. But, you know, like I, I, had to, I had to write in English because if I wanted to be published here, because I am here mm -hmm. now, I, I live here for a long time, I, it had to be in English. So mm -hmm. I think it's amazing. It's amazing to me that one is that the, the resonance in your head, like where your thoughts and creative process took you, was into this field or area of writing that is escapist, fanciful, clearly, I mean, it's a, it's a very appreciated and, and real area of literature that many people are hungry for, right? So it doesn't, it doesn't hit me, it, myself, like it doesn't, it doesn't, I don't, it's not like I've gone out and read tons of romance novels, I really mm -hmm. haven't. But for example, for my wife, I don't know if, I think it's like a guilty pleasure. It's like a, uh, it's not a guilty pleasure. It's not a guilt. No, this is the wrong term. It's not a guilty pleasure. It's just, it's a kind of escape to just say, okay, you know what? It's the end of the day. It's just a pleasure. It doesn't have to be guilty. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I guess it's because, but in terms of, in terms of my wife, it's because, you know, she, maybe she feels badly because I'd be judgmental because I'm a guy and I'd be like, oh, come on, you know, but I'm not, that's not like, that's not really my style, but. Yeah, but you write in a way, there is a, some kind of, um, um, what's the word? I don't know how to describe, but there's a little bit of. Uh, Prejudice? Yeah, maybe something like that. Bias? Uh, 
romance, right? Because a lot of times, you know, yeah. people think like, oh, yeah, I'm reading romance. So it's like kind of a, a, a an easy uh, book, literature. It's not like a literary yeah. um, writing, you know, it's not Gabriel Garcia Marquez. It's not anything like, <laughs> but in any case, it's something that it doesn't, you know, it's an escapism. And a lot of people can only relate to that. And, you know, at the, at the core of the human emotion, it's love and passion, you know, and everybody mm -hmm. kind of, even if they say like, no, that's not what I want. And that's, I never think about that. But, you know, at the bottom, you know, the, the human relations, the human emotions, there's always love. And you always want this thing to go on forever and have a happy ending, you know, it's kind of like the, the innate desire of everybody to, <laughs> to just like be mm. with someone that they really love and be together and have a happy ending. So, and you can see that from sales of genres because the romance yeah. novels, I think the last statistic that I saw, it was a couple of years ago, was more than 60% of all the sales of books does have a huge audience because you know it or not, it's something that people want it's like that good feeling you know that good right feeling. just like uh, what sierra wrote there in the um, in that uh, yeah. picture that you're showing like a good feeling because you're gonna have and you know and romance one of the things you were asking me before about um what the techniques of romance but romance has to have a happy ending if you're not going to have okay. a happy ending, it's not going to be categorized as romance. You're going to be like women's okay. fiction or something else. But to have a romance, you're going to have to have the happy ending. It's like happy ever after or happy until whatever, you know, but but they're going to have right. to be up together. You cannot kill one of them. You cannot separate one right. of them. That's not going to fly as a romance. So that's one thing yeah. that it has. To... So people pick up a romance, you know, because they, even though there will be a lot of, um, conflicts in the middle of the story you yeah. know because you have to write that they are not going to be together for the longest time until the end <laughs> yeah 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 of course but the, you want that good feeling like oh my god finally they love each other or now we found out that they really are into each other and ah you know that kind of relief like they are together mm -hmm. that's good and then you feel you you end the book and you're kind of like happy because you know something happy happened in the book <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, I, like I, 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 I hear what you're saying, and I haven't thought about this in a way. I'm just like, okay. So part of shooting it raw, the podcast is I speak to people I find interesting. Mm -hmm. I've had a few sexologists, and I've had a few therapists, and everything, and and counselors, and I have this thing about sexual health, mental health, uh -huh. absolutely. And so the whole thing about uh, sexuality is it happens between your ears before it can happen between your legs, right? And yeah. essentially a romance is a, an extremely extended, pardon my French, like mindfuck, right? Like you're basically <laughs> prolonging the, the, the sort of the tension and the, and the kind of the, the uncertainty. But as you say, for it to be categorized as a romance, you have to have, have a, a pleasurable climax at the end. Well, they have to be together at the end. Now, you can have sure. sex scenes in, within the book, you know? Yeah, yeah you of course. You have to be like the ending is not like, oh, like, finally they're going to fuck. No, <laughs> they can do that okay, before. Okay. But they will still separate or something won't go right or, you know. So there will be all this flirting. In my story, what I did was I tried to build this very flirting situation between yep, the two of yep. them but then you have the, the 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 main conflict already is that they are not in the same continent right he lives in greece she right. lives in Houston. so immediately you already have a conflict because how are they going to get together forever one of them is going to have to compromise right and he has his yep. job and she has her thing so it's already there and then you put in more elements somebody else you know like you do a, a love triangle somebody interested you don't right. know if they are what's going to happen with that situation so you throw in a lot of other elements and and you try to build that tension like you can tell that they are like really drawn to each other they stay together they do have there is sex scenes you know in all the the, the books and 
you know, I try to make it in a way that that people will really feel like he is so into her and she's totally in love with her with him. But then there is all these other conflicts that separates them. So they're not together happily. They 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 have those moments. It's the sex scenes are very crucial to the story of how their relationship builds, you know, and continue yep. because it's the sexual tension. Like you know when when they are like next to each other yeah i've had readers uh tell me that they can feel the tension and that's exactly yeah. what i was trying to convey the way that i'm um, the way that i write is like i'm basically watching a movie in my mind you know and then i try to write that you know to try right. i try to get the sounds the sights you know how they are feeling the body language of course it's a lot of things to to do and you know sometimes you cannot accomplish everything that your your mind is doing you know putting in writing but mm. i try as much as i can to give the readers in most of the feelings you know how they are so dying for each other but they they don't compromise for whatever reason you know there's always these conflicts huh. and things interrupting until the last book <laughs> so i kept right, doing right, right. very bad things to the readers i did cliffhangers you know so <laughs> very bad and it was now you get the cliffhangers but the trilogy is ready so you get one after the other you can read everything nice. don't have to wait anymore <laughs> okay so let's move on to the next image but before we do that i want to give one little sort of um compliment or note of praise i guess it's that okay so because this is audio and a conversation and because I myself am really uh, aware of language and, and sen like sensitive to that. Like I have friends who are Italian and I have friends who are Portuguese and of course many people I know speak Cantonese and, and Hebrew and English and all in French and all stuff. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But just in listening to the music of your voice, explaining, for example, the narrative direction and pace as you, that you're trying to write it's like the musicality of your thinking is coming through your voice which is why i said before like, yeah, por yeah brazilian portuguese to me is like the sexiest it's very um romantic in the sense that you're telling me the story and it's it's supported by the sound and the pace and the stress of how you're putting the words together and uh, I kind of feel that in English, yeah, I mean, I, I wonder, um, it's like, I, like to read uh, your, your, your novel in German to me would probably seem a little bit, <laughs> I can imagine that some things would get lost in translation. Yeah. Poor Germans. No, I don't have that yet. We have in Spanish and Greek, which, nice. you know, the truth, the Greek ones, the guy that I approached to see if I could, um, because the, the publishing in, in Greece is different, you know, like they are not yeah, into yeah. books. So you have to have the, the, the actual book. You have to have the print book and it has to be in the bookstores. So I mm. had to find uh, a Greek publisher, you know, to do it. And um, I um, met this guy online and uh, he, do he doesn't speak English. If he, when he does English with me, it's Google Translator completely. But I'm learning Greek, right. so I can kind of understand a little bit. <laughs> Amazing. And then he, I told him, I was like, well, I because he's a writer too, but he writes different. He, he writes mysteries, not nothing romantic. And I told him, like, look, my books are romance. I don't know, like, you know, if you have a market for these, and and but my character is Greek, and I actually went to Greece to do some research, so I'm, you know biased oh, nice. yeah. and passionate about Greece and all that and he was like oh no I want to read it so I sent it to I had had it translated you know and I sent it the translation to him because he didn't you know he couldn't write in English and he read it and he was like odd you know I mean I'm not kidding I was I was surprised because I didn't I thought they were gonna go like nah you know whatever I mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're not interested and he was like oh my god this is so good I can totally tell oh. how you're to Greece comes through and oh it's an honor for us to have somebody that likes Greece so Aww. much like you and so he was so like it was so cute and he like knew the, the the publisher and he said you know I'm gonna send your manuscript to this to this publisher and I'm sure he's gonna want to publish it and the publisher read 
you know, over the weekend. And he called me back on Monday. The publisher speaks English. And he's like, I want to publish this in Greece. So awesome. Let's 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 work the contract. I said, okay, fine. That was my dream anyway, to have the book in Greece. <laughs> how how do I say how do I say I love it in Greek? Muaresi poli. Ah, uh, muaresi poli. Okay. Now, yeah. since I spoke Greek, um, and mm -hmm. look, it's already been it's already been almost forty five minutes, and so I want to give the amount of time to each image so that you know we can really dive in. Uh, uh -huh. So, can you just pick one? So I'll, I'll open up to two photos and then can you pick the one that we'll talk about? And then there'll just be three photos instead of four photos in this episode. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. I don't know what I have anymore. So just... I'll tell you what I have. Okay, so I have... It's an image of the Olympian Love tri Trilogy coloring book. Ah, okay. Or there's a picture, I guess it's of you in with red hair and a black hair. <laughs> and, and for me, I think that, that image to me is really exciting. Before we go on, I want to thank you for the compliment because I wasn't expecting that. And it's very, I never, you know, I mean, it's just, <laughs> but a lot of times to tell you the truth, I'm very hesitant about, you know, doing interviews, audio or live just because of my accent. It's always something that no. in the back of my mind, now I have an accent, people are going to be like, oh my God, this she can't write, she can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Look, here's the thing. Okay, I, okay, I worked at the, the Human Rights Commission in one of my many jobs, and mm -hmm. that made me very sensitive to ideas of identity. And yeah. being Canadian, being from Canada, that you have people from all over the place. Mm -hmm. Everybody has. Everybody has an accent. You know, it is. Uh, it is. An, an accent is only uh, where you put the stress and the emphasis, <laughs> right? So yeah. you and I, we have. At first, your brain is like a uh, what? What? All of a sudden, the sound has changed. It is very strange. Mm -hmm. uh, and this man, he sounds a little French, but uh, sometimes he sounds a little uh, Israeli. And, and so the sound is very strange. But the, pro the point of our accent is to push that aside and realize that uh, what we are trying to do is the idea. Right? Like put, aside, put aside the sound. And what you're doing is you're creating ideas in other people's heads. And so right mm -hmm. now I'm using a strange Israeli from a French accent that is very confusing. But uh, the point is, your accent is really beautiful. It is uh, really, <laughs> I, I really love it. Yeah. <gasps> I love it. Yeah, it's great. Thank it's you. great. Thank you. That's fine. Okay. Obrigada. Obrigado. Obrigadi. Say obrigado because you were a man. I, <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> But I will actually say obrigadi because I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you can say obrigadi because we do like inyo for everything, right? You know, in football, soccer, you know, most yeah, of the, yeah. uh, the names of the, the, the people have inyo on it. <laughs> okay. So, look, I'll put the image up of your the Olympian Love Trilogy coloring book. Uh, I'll just quickly say it's like a, 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 a promotional photo with, with these flowers and then there's the uh, which is a very strange idea of having a coloring book uh on it's like on a black velvet tabletop with some pens and and mm -hmm. it's a very we could talk about it but i really i just quickly saw that that photo and I, I, it's a view which for me you know people are most interested in other people You're in what looks like, uh, uh, so you're standing at a table with, you know, with basically uh, printouts of your book. It's a mm -hmm. commercial sort of space. And you're, you're yeah. wearing all black. You have a black mask. Because you're, you're at, a, at a conference or something or, or, or a trade yes. show, you're wearing, you're wearing one of those like passes around your neck. Uh, so mm -hmm. your hair is bright, bright red. Uh, which now you said it was a wig. That's fine. But you're wearing this <laughs> shirt that's really quite, it's really quite uh, playful. So the shirt is like, you have, a, it comes with a hood and your neck is exposed and you've got, you've got like this nice necklace with a little bit of red inside. So it, it matches your, your hair very well. So you have a good sense of style. A Melisandre necklace, but it was a small oh, okay. one. Okay. Melisandre, the, the, the 
witch kind of woman. <laughs> right, right. Well, you look, it's a very playful outfit that you're wearing. Uh, so it looks like a very, very large conference hall. Because it's, it's a close shot image of you, but I can just see through the, the curtain in the back, the lights are at a very, very high ceiling. So this is probably a very large room. So, so what am I looking at? What, what is this? Okay, so here in uh, Houston, we have Comic Palooza, which is okay. a comic convention, right? So every year we have one, and then usually like uh, some celebrities come and writers and actors and people that do comic magazines and stories and things like that. And my publisher here, you know, my American publisher, Inklings Publishing, uh, because they also he from Houston, Texas. They yeah. always she always buys a table because there is like vendor area, right? So she always right. buys a table at the at this convention because it's the largest Comic Con in Texas. And uh, so we go there. So we do like signings, and there is also literary track. So they invite us as writers to do some. Uh, teaching, to talk, you know, to do debates, to have panels. And I've been lucky enough that for the last, what, probably five, six years, I've been a guest speaker at the Comic Losers here in Houston. And I've had the chance to interact with a lot of uh, some famous uh, writers as well, moderate the panels, you know, talk about the writing process. And not only that, but we also can stay at the table, you know, looking at People, we come, a lot of people come in, in, in different costumes because there's a lot of cosplay involved in this. Yeah, in yeah. Famous people. So that is one of the things that is pretty cool that we do every year. Of course, in 2020, it was canceled. But this one yeah. is specifically is from last year. So last year in July, they reopened it. And we had to be, you know, it was mask only because it was kind of middle sort of the pandemic still but we already had sure. some people vaccinated so it was uh mask required and all that but we did and then i was i mean i had this i had usually i have costumes that are more like medieval and but i have this one which is like a long dress of a hood it's like a black dress like a like uh it's not necessarily a witch it's supposed to be uh a magician or something like that and then yeah like, okay, I'm going to have to try to do something different. So I had like this red wig. I put it on. I put the necklace, which was the Melisandre neck that I had from before, from like a couple of years ago. And then with the mask. So basically, it's a couple of, <laughs> some people said, you look like a ninja too. <laughs> so I said, yeah, it's kind of a mixture. <laughs> ninja, whatever. <laughs> no, it's great. You know, if people like that and then they come they take pictures with you and you know it's it's a lot of fun to be out there like in the costume and we we do that all the time so our mm -hmm. table and you can see probably in the table there are not only my books but like several books from all the authors from inkling's publishing but uh it's very cool because we can uh, talk about our books you know people buy and then you say like oh you're gonna sell like a romance in a comic con what you never know what people like because you see like maybe sure the Friend is going with her boyfriend, and the boyfriend loves Thor, but the girlfriend hates anything nerdy. And then she'll fi yeah. find like a romance and go, "Hey, you know something that I like." <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. You never know where your audience is, right? So, like, the more the better, you know. You get seen. That's great. I love the idea of of somebody listening to these conversations and uh -huh. not maybe in their minds they've always kind of been curious about doing something like this or for many people we all have these like sparks or moments where we're like oh that just completely started a whole new train of thought right so mm -hmm. have you had an, an, uh, an experience where you're talking to somebody who is either a fan or who is just just had the conversation with you and then you really got the feeling that they left inspired to maybe give it a shot actually there you know like whenever we are in this uh, public events and people come and they're like oh my god you're an author because sometimes they think we're just there selling the books right mm -hmm. and then um you know one of the others like oh yeah this is my book i wrote this do you want because if they are interested in buying it we always offer like do you want us to sign it you know and 
give them another a piece of swag or you know like a bookmark or something else a pen something and uh, and then a lot of times they're like oh my god how did you become a writer and then you start like talking to them that you just go and do it and challenge yourself and and a lot of times people will have tried or they always wanted to or they already have a manuscript but they think it's going to be like super hard and nobody will and we tell them i say look a lot of times you can do it by yourself you can find you'd be lucky enough to find a publishing company or you can do it by yourself but you can also submit short stories and things to uh, other people and other venues and even though you're going to be rejected you're putting yourself yourself out there so if you really want it go for it and don't worry about what mm -hmm. people so when you tell them that you have also had some problems that you've been rejected and you also get one star reviews but you're still there standing and selling and you know enjoying it they get excited <laughs> about it you know? <laughs> it's all part of the fun you know yep. and not everybody's going to like your things they're gonna hate it and give you one star and whatever you know but then you always have the one that is gives you like the five star and keeps writing to you like every week saying hey when are you coming up with a new book so <laughs> you know you never know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love it i totally totally appreciate it thank you so much like this has been really great uh what what is okay so what does your mother call you andrea oh it's andrea andrea is your real is is your first name okay good andrea yeah you know the real name is the e Okay, so Andrea, I like I uh I mean obrigado like a million times. Thank you so much. This has been really great. Thanks. Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun. And you know, like if it wasn't for an hour, I probably think that we could just go on the whole night talking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean my night and your morning, you know. Sure. <laughs> sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And uh maybe in Houston. I like Houston. Houston's good. Thank you so much for having me. It was a Great talking to you. It was an extraordinary experience, and I'm looking forward to the uh, to the audio <laughs> and I'll um, send to all my fan base. Oh, thank you so much, Andrea. Uh, bom noite. Boa noite. Have a good. Bom dia. Have a good day. <laughs> Shooting it raw. Yes. Shooting it.